At present, the rise in global temperatures due to climate change is having devastating impacts around the world, creating more intense storms, devastating droughts, and the loss of natural habitats. Nuclear energy plays a key role in decarbonization commitments. Let's talk about where we are today. Nuclear provides 10% of the worldwide energy supply and over 30% of carbon-free energy. In the United States, nuclear is 20% of our energy mix, but over 50% of our carbon-free energy. And study after study has shown that's a necessary part of our solution to prevent climate change. Carbon-free energy sources like nuclear, hydropower, wind, and solar currently work together to reduce greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Today's energy grid is still the same one that we had in 1900, and it was built primarily for coal, and the energy grid of the future needs to be built on clean solar, wind, and nuclear power, generated in a lot of places that can serve all of the places that need it. Nuclear energy is the backbone of the United States and the world's clean energy. And we need more nuclear along with other clean sources. If we have any hope of keeping global warming to 1.5 degrees C or lower without emitting any of the carbon pollution that is contributing to climate change. While the current nuclear fleet is critical to meeting climate goals, new designs provide improved solutions and hold the potential to fundamentally change the way power is delivered. The advanced reactor space is very exciting right now. There's over 60 different technologies that are being pursued by the private sector here in the United States. What's beautiful as we look forward, it's not just that it needs to produce electricity. If you think about what we need to decarbonize, we need to decarbonize the economy. And some of these new reactors will be providing hydrogen, they'll be providing high temperature steam, additional products besides just electricity that we need to decarbonize our economy. Advanced vision can look different from top to bottom from what people traditionally think of nuclear power. You can not require as much land, water, or other resources. Um, the safety is much different. And because of that, we want a clean grid, but we don't want to be reliant on either diesel or gas whenever the sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing. And so we can be a part of their clean energy grid. And I think that's one of our goals as well as the broader group of people working in advanced vision. With the ability to provide always-on, carbon-free power, nuclear energy currently produces more carbon-free electricity than all other sources combined in the U.S. When you look at zero-carbon systems of the future, it's really about providing affordable and reliable, always there, 24 by 7, clean energy. And particularly when you have resources or grids that are highly penetrated by renewables, they all tend to go on or off at the same time. You need to have a resource that can balance the grid to make sure that if you're in the middle of doing something at home using electricity, it doesn't go away. So for all those reasons, we see advanced reactor technology as being a critical part to a clean energy future. Advanced vision can be done in an array of sizes. It doesn't have to look like traditional large power plants. You don't have to be reliant on the taxpayer dollar. You can really reach different customers than you're reaching otherwise. You're not selling huge amounts of power to a large utility that then distributing to a large amount of customers. You can reach campuses, hospitals, data centers, small communities that want this as part of their grid. And lastly, you can actually get it built and operating to hopefully make a difference in climate and the timescales we need it to happen. As consensus grows to move away from carbon emitting energy sources, fossil fuel generation particularly coal plants, are being closed. Advanced reactors can help support the transition from coal generation in the communities and for the workforce that rely on it. We're seeing a lot of coal plants coming offline, uh, and we're going to continue to see that over the next number of years for a variety of reasons, everything from economics to this transition to, to clean energy. And advanced nuclear plants are really well suited to come into those locations, site their plants there, and replace that generation. The communities get really good jobs that are going to be around for 60 to 80 years. The heat from the reactor can be used to make steel, to run industrial processes, to, to make chemicals. Uh, uh, to run refineries, all kinds of things that right now, to get that heat, we have to burn fossil fuels. If we can use the heat from these new advanced reactors, it's a way to decarbonize these very difficult to decarbonize sectors. So advanced nuclear gives these communities an opportunity to continue to play the role that they played for many decades before to power our country and to do it in a way that doesn't emit carbon uh, dioxide emissions. Addressing the climate crisis will require a global effort that engages both public and private sectors. 
With wind, nuclear, solar, and hydropower all working together, the world can transition to clean, reliable grids. So really when it comes to climate change, and one of the key things that you know, the developed world made as a commitment was to provide the technologies to enable a clean future for those developing countries. They need to have a solution. An advanced small reactor technology is what does that for them. It's a resource that can go and integrate flexibly into very small grids or electricity grids that exist in many of the smaller or developing countries. And they're very reliable. When you put in a load of fuel into the tank of a small modular reactor, it's good for 18 to 24 months. So having that capability where you don't have to worry about disruptions due to weather or other things is really important for these developing countries to have that reliable, affordable access. Well, the next 10 years, I would say we're at an inflection point for nuclear energy. You're gonna see some really interesting new makes and models be brought uh, to the marketplace, and you're gonna see some pilot plants be constructed. And after that, you're gonna see hundreds of reactors being built. And that momentum is gonna catch on across the world.